What's going on, YouTube family? T.O. here, Simplistic Fishing, back at you tonight. We're going to do some lake breakdowns. I'm working on Eagle Mountain Lake. That's out near Fort Worth, a little bit west of here. But I uh, had a uh, subscriber do a special request for this lake, so I wanted to break that down for you and show you guys what we can find. So uh, let's go ahead and jump on into this. This is probably going to be two or three videos. Um, I'll try to make them a little bit longer than normal, probably just because I think I can break it down into two videos uh, for the Google Earth waypoints and then two videos for the offshore spots. But I just don't know. These are pretty big lakes. So let's see how this goes. Hopefully we'll just have about four videos, but we do have the potential to possibly even go up to six on this one. But uh, don't want to delay anymore. Let's jump into this. Let's get started. Here we go. All right, as we mentioned in the introduction, I'm going to try to do this in two videos, but let's see how this goes. This might take me a little longer than two videos. Every time I look at it, I'm thinking, no, nah, it's probably going to be three or four. But I broke this into two different zones. The blue would be zone uh, two, and then zone one is actually this yellow down here at the bottom. So what we're going to do tonight is we're just going to talk about just the yellow ones for zone one, and then we'll hop over and do zone two on a separate video. So I'm going to start over here on the uh, the west side. And we're just going to work our way back over here to this point on this side. So on um, most of our videos, you know, if you've seen my lake breakdowns before, I typically I'll point out the rock. I'll point out uh, ramps, piles, humps, ledges, pretty much anything I can find that looks like some type of a fish attracting site or a place that you would want to go to to really locate largemouth bass. Now, uh, I do have a lot of people that follow the channel as well uh, for crappie fishing. Um, just for the lake breakdowns, but this, these are really focused more on largemouth bass. So I don't want to mislead you there. So to start off with, first thing we see here are these boat ramps. And you guys have heard me talk about it a thousand times. If you watch my channel, boat ramps are a great pattern, especially personal boat ramps. They love to set up there. The bluegill love to spawn there and hang out as well. They're just really good areas to go and fish, especially when you're on, you know, a little bit of a shallow type uh, season or something like that. So I've marked a couple ramps here for you guys. There's one ramp here and one here. There's not a lot going on in this bank line, um, but this lake has a lot of good stuff. So don't be misled by how we start here. Uh, and then as we go down the bank line, the next thing that really I'm finding here is just a little bit of rock. So you can see here that we've got rock. And actually, before I go too much further, I pulled this back to October of 2014. So that was the best image that I could I could find. I think I actually had one that went back to uh, December, I thought, but that doesn't look like it. So October of 2014 would be the best image that we could find here. Now, I did see this right here, and I can't tell what this is. Is that's a standing timber or what it is? Can't tell what it is. I, I didn't mark it, but if you're over there fishing, those kind of things that stick out on the bank line, those can typically be good areas as well. So then you got a little more riprap and rock going along this bank line, all shallow stuff, probably, you know, shallow square bills, things like that. Um, got a little bit of a rock pile going on here, but I didn't mark that. Now, this is going to get tricky because there's some places where I do mark rock and there's also places where I don't mark rock. So if the entire bank line and the whole area is just all rock, obviously it doesn't make any sense for me to say, hey, put a point there for rock. But if there's rock piles or certain things on the rock formations that stand out, that look like good fish attracting areas, that's what I'm going to label it as rock. So just keep that in mind because there's a ton of rock on this uh, on this lake for sure. So as we move down this bank line, I didn't see too many good things, but I did see this little boat ramp right in here. This one looks really shallow, um, but might be worth checking out if you're on that pattern. And then kind of moving through here, not seeing too much. Um, it looks like they're, the, oh, those are birds. I thought it was like a brush pile I missed or something. Um, and then moving on over here, we've got a couple more ramps that are right in here. So you can see this looks like it could have been maybe, I don't know if it's an old ramp or an old roadbed, um, but I didn't see anything connecting it on the other side. So when I zoomed it way out to see if there was anything that kind of connected over here, I didn't really see too much that would, make, that would make me think that it was a roadbed. So I think those are just ramps. But anyway, there's a couple ramps there. You got more ramps here, three more coming in here. This one actually has a little bit of, uh, cover on it. And then back in here, you've got a pretty decent creek channel. Now, the thing that I thought was interesting up in this part of the lake was this just didn't look like a really, I don't know, the big fish attracting area. I, I think that we're going to come across other areas in this lake that are going to be probably better hotspots. Um, even on these creek channels, if you look at them, they're just not that well defined. Um, 
but they're defined enough to where you have a weed line. And that's always a good thing. If you've got the weed line, then you know exactly where to fish. So if you're back up in here fishing, find that creek channel and find that weed line. And that weed line is probably going to be where you're going to, where you're going to have the most success. Now, if I move this up, you'll see, well, 2015, it was flooded. Uh, 2016 might still be flooded there. I'm going to move this up to a, to a year when it's not flooded. And you can see that creek channel is not as obvious. So go out there on that creek channel and see if you can find those weed lines. Those could be good areas. All right, so I'm going to move it back to October 2014. So you can kind of see that creek line again. And then we're going to keep moving on down. This looks like a pretty shallow, you know, shallow area for sure. You got another ramp over in here. And as I move on, coming over here, another ramp. And another ramp. And we got a couple more back down in here. And again, on this bank line, you know, not seeing a lot of rock, not a lot of laydowns, not a lot of creek channels, no ditches, no things like that. All the things that you would typically look at uh, to try to find the bass, just not seeing a ton in this area. But I do see a ton as we go throughout the lake. Uh, some more ramps here as well. to Fish. And then here's where you've got some good riprap. So obviously you could fish around this riprap. That would be a good area to take a look at. Uh, you know, all of this stuff looks really, really good. This might be a little shallow up in here, but still be good. They, they always attract to that type of stuff. And the fact that there's not a lot of rock in this, this side of the lake, this area of the lake it looks just real sandy and, and blah, you know, and the, uh, the rock would definitely be a great place for them to go to. So definitely take a look at those rocks if you're fishing this side of the lake. Now, you've also got some really good rocks around here. Obviously, you're limited to what you can fish back in here, but take a look at those. Also got another ramp there as well. And then moving on up the bank line, not seeing too much here. But one thing I did want to point out as we're going through these, uh, these Google Earth waypoints um, and just when you're out there on the lake is that this lake has really good transition areas. Um, and if you know what I mean by transition areas, if you haven't heard what I mean, or if you haven't heard of a transition area, it's basically just where the bank line totally changes. It pretty much goes from sandy to rock. And they'll set up right on those transition lines. It's very strange, but they really will. They really will. If you go out there and you scan them, a lot of times they'll set it right up on that change. So, for example, like right here, there is a transition area going on right in here somewhere. Oops, sorry about that. And so, you know, like right here, this is still the same, right? All that bank's the same. And then right here, kind of right here, it starts getting rocky and it really gets rocky like right in here where I've marked that rock. So really this is kind of your transition area right in here. So this is probably going to be more of a hot spot um, for them to hang out. But this is all good because basically you went from sandy, you got a little rock behind that dock, and then this is where the rock starts again. So you may even want to fish all the way down in here. But anyways, as we're going through these lake breakdowns, that one's not as good, probably not a good time to bring up the transition area but there are some really good looking transition areas on this lake. So you've got rock here, you've got a ramp here as well. You've got another rock, uh, more rock kind of piling coming out in here. And this looks totally different. If you look at it when the, the water's full, it looks completely different. So just keep in mind that a lot of this stuff that I'm pointing out to you is gonna be under the water, like way under the water. Rocks here as well. Now, when I said that, you can see here we've got, you know, got this sandy stuff and then kind of got the man-made rock and stuff. But then you got some really good rocks, some real chunky rock looking really good. And it, all the way down that bank line, so that whole bank line would probably be pretty good. Crank baits, things like that, shaky heads. Got more rock in here. What I really liked about this spot, obviously there's, there's rock along here, is you can almost see a ledge. You can almost see a shadow. It's either from the dock or from that rock ledge. There's a little bit of shadow as well. So right in here where that ledge is, is probably going to be a really good spot for them to set up in. And then again, guys, we went straight from all this rock to immediately switching back over to that sandy bank. So find those transition areas, probably right around that dock, right around where that ledge was and everything. Those will be your more of your hot spots. Then you've got a ramp here. You've got another ramp back in here. Not a lot going on on this bank line, but then as we start to move up, we start to see little pilings of rock again. So you've got a real good pile of rock right in here. Kind of keeps happening all the way through here. You got more rock in here, 
and you've got this little outcrop of rock and debris that's right in this area. So I'm going to have mark that as well. Then as we move up, there's a little ramp that's hidden back in here and some steps. You know, I don't know how much of that is actually going to be underwater. Let's take a look at it. So part of those steps are underwater. I don't know what it is with bass, but on steps and ladders, they love that stuff, man. So if you ever see any steps or ladders, definitely go fishing because they love it. Um, they're attracted to them. You can almost like bet money when you pull up to a dock, you know, that you know has fish on it. You can pretty much bet money if you cast at those steps, if they have steps that are dangling down into the water, that's probably going to be where the bass is. It's going to hang out around there somewhere. All right, so moving on up here, we've got the steps, we've got the ramp, we've got more rocks right here. So this was like a really good, you know, pile of rocks. So just some really good stuff going here. This whole bank line looks pretty rocky. What I liked about this right here is, you, and, and this is kind of hard to tell if this is just Google Earth messing with me or if this really is a really good ledge. But this looks like it's a pretty decent ledge where the ground's kind of sandy and maybe a mildly rocky, but then it kind of drops off right here. So look right in here. This is probably going to be a good spot to locate some fish. Plus, it's off of a point, and so you can't ever, uh, can't ever go wrong there. All right, so then moving on up here, a couple more just kind of piles of rocks that stuck out. Like this one sticks out. It's a lot farther out than the rest of them. Um, you also have this one here. Just again, just a little bit different than everything around it, right? Similar, but a little more rocks and a little more out, a little bit of a point there. So take a look at those. And then moving on back here, we've got another ramp that's coming back through here. And then some rock around this uh, this dock and everything, basically like rip wrap and stuff. And then we get down to the dam. So we're going to move past the dam and we're going to go into this next area, which is right in here. So we start seeing some rocks along this bank line, nothing too crazy. So I didn't really mark it, didn't see anything that was really that attractive. This looks like a little bit heavier rock right in here. So maybe if you were down in here, come check this out right here, especially with it being a, a point, uh, always a good place to look. And then we've got a lot of different things back in here as well. We've got a ramp back in here. We've got more rock that's back behind this dock. That one's kind of hard to see, but there's some rock right in here that I really liked off that point. And I think you can see this better if I actually move it up. Yeah, now you can see that there's rock back in there. So I'm going to move that back to 2014. I'm going to keep moving on. Nothing much going on in there. Um, looking back in these pockets, not seeing too much back in here other than I like this. Now, I don't know what this would look like, you know, on the, when the, when the lake is at full pool, but you can see a shadow line right there. I mean, very significant shadow lines. You know, there's some kind of a ledge or a steep wall that's there or whatever it is, but that might be worth going back and looking at and seeing how high that water gets. Does the water actually get all the way back to that? And if it does, then that, that creates a real nice shadow there and a real good ledge. So I would definitely go back in there and, and take a look at that and just see what's going on back there. It looked very interesting. All right, so then going back up here, uh, we've got more rocks kind of off this point that I marked for you. And you can kind of see it's, it's pretty much this whole area right in here with that big chunky rock. And then going back in here, I thought maybe that would be a creek channel or something, but it looks like just a bunch of uh, houses and kind of drainage pipes and things like that. So not sure too much going back in there. Um, and then moving on up here, didn't see too much in these areas where all these houses were. You know, you'd think you'd see a bunch of brush piles. You got to East Texas, every one of these docks got brush piles, all kinds of things. We get up here, <laughs> there's just nothing. So we go here, not much going on in here, but there is a ramp over here and some really nice houses. Um, and then there's some rock that's right off of this point. So you can tell, I can't tell if this is like, really light rock or what it is, but there's a little rock pile that's right here, right where you see my rock icon, big kind of boulder looking thing. So that looks like it'd definitely be a good spot to go look at. And then moving on up here, didn't see much going on around all these houses and these bank lines, just, you know, maybe fish off this point. This looks like it could be interesting, but there weren't any rock piles or anything like that off of it. And we'll talk about that stuff when we get into uh, 
into the Navy Onyx side. But then we're going to keep moving up here. We did see a ramp up in there. And then moving on over here, some really good rock that's off of this point. So I'm going to mark that for you. And you can see here it's like chunkier rock, so it really looks good. Now the image from Google Earth is a little messed up because you've got a pretty steep ledge there. Um, but you can still tell that those are really good rocks that can create some really good shadows and some good places for those fish to hide behind. And I'm going to keep moving on up. Didn't see too much going along on this bank line, but we did have a couple things back in here that piqued my interest. Uh, one was all this rock right in here around this ledge and this little point that comes out here. And then there's some hidden rock right in here, right off of this point that might be worthy of going and looking for. And then moving up, same type thing. Um, started seeing some more rock right in here. So this is like... Um, I don't know why that image is so messed up, but if I move this up to a different year, you'll really see it. So this is like where they put riprap in here around these multi-million dollar homes. Um, so those are always good areas to fish as well. And plus, it's probably pretty cool to look at those crazy homes. So then moving on up here, some more rock back here behind this marina. It's worthy of looking at. And then moving on over on this point, there's some rock off this point as well. So basically it's just the riprap around that marina, but this looks really good too. And I like how this point sets up as well. So if you could get some wind coming in this way, that would be a great, uh, great point to take a look at. And then hidden back in here was a little drain. You can see back in here. And sometimes those drains can end up just being absolute money. So I went ahead and marked it for you since it just stuck out to me. Uh, might not be worthy of, of fishing, but at least go check it out and see if you can catch anything back there. And then when we get back in here, we've got a pretty good creek channel that comes back in here. I think it's a creek channel. It was kind of hard to tell. Yeah, it is a creek channel because I can see it now. Um, but there's just, there's also a pond dam that's way back in here too. So this is all very strange the way it's set up, but let's start right here. So I'm going to show you guys this. There's a pond that's back in here. Notice how everything is dry. There's no water back in here, but there's one area that's pretty good. And there's a pond dam back in here. And if I move this up to uh, to normal, actually, you don't want to do 2018 because you can't get past that. It doesn't look like you can get past right here. But if you look at to normal, you wouldn't even know that that was back there. So there's a pond dam back there. And then as you get through all of this, there's some additional rock right in here. So here you can see where it starts getting some chunky rock and some things like that right around in this area. And then as we follow this down, there's a really good weed line that's happening under the water down here. So if I move that up, you wouldn't even know that was there. The kayakers obviously know it's there, but this is a really good area to take a look at. You can see where that weed line kind of makes this little V, you know, right in here, kind of you got your creek channel running through here, but you've also got another weed line back in here as well. So that is probably a great spot to go take a look at. Uh, I can see them setting up in there. There's lots of cover. There's lots of shade. You've got current from the, from the creek channel. So a lot of good things going on in that area. So I went ahead and marked those weed lines for you. You see them here. You know, you want to just go up there and work around them. Sometimes those weed lines can, obviously they can change, but for the most part, they'll stay pretty consistent. So go up there and take a look at it, see what you can find up there. And then when you're up there too, if you look over on this side, there's some additional rock as well. You've got rock up here by the docks and then a ramp over here. And then I went ahead and marked rock here and here. Look at this chunky rock. I mean, this stuff just looks great. Love it. So you can tell that now we're getting to an area of the lake that I would probably put a little more focus on because there's just a lot more stuff over here that you can fish around. Uh, cover, you know, creek channels, stuff like that. So that's some additional rock that was kind of hidden off of this point back in here. And then if you look back in here, there's an old road bed. I don't know if it's a road bed or a ramp or what the heck it is. But anyways, it's some kind of very large concrete structure with some rock around it. So definitely worth taking a look at back in there. And then up here, we've got some additional rock right around this ledge. And then I'm going to keep on moving on because I know our time's getting long here. We've also got some additional rock that's right in here with some riprap as well. Really good areas. This point comes out pretty far. Um, and then you've got this stuff. I didn't mark it, but you've got this point that comes out here. And I think we'll probably mark that with the Navionics side, but that would be 
decent to take a look at. The only thing that concerns me about that point is you look out here, you don't see any shells, you don't see any rocks, you don't see really anything off that point that would really, you know, attract you to want to go there other than the fact that it just looks really good um, the way that it's set up. You've also got a ramp that's back in here between these marinas if you wanted to go back there and mess with the boat ramps. You've got more ramps up here, back in here behind this marina. This marina is fairly clean, not a lot of stuff going on um, below the surface. You know, not even a lot of rocks or anything, just pretty much mud. Um, and then as we move on down here, you're going to see I don't see much down that bank line until we get a little bit out to you right in here. Now, you might want to take a look right there. I don't know if that's a hard spot or what it is. I did not notice that before. Let me go ahead and mark that. I'm just going to say to check that because there's something there. I don't know if it's a high spot. It could be a rock pile. It could be a brush pile. But check that. And then also when you're over here, also check these because I can't tell what this stuff is. But it's some kind of pile of something. And there's also a little bit of it going on right in here. So if you're around this point, just go scan those three spots and see if there's anything on them. Because can't tell what they are, but the thing that I can tell is that it's totally different from everything around it. So those would definitely be good places to take a look at. And we're going to move on down this bank line. There is some rock right off of this little point. So see how it's sandy and muddy, and then all of a sudden you get a little bit of rock? This can be really good as well. Again, you've got some more rock going along this bank line. Let's see how close we are. I might have to end this video. Now we're going to finish this sucker. All right, so then we've got some more rock as well by this dock. Again, those big chunky rocks, you know, the kind of rocks that we really like to fish around. You kind of got that pretty much from this rock icon here all the way up to here. So this whole bank line, it's really happening. And I'm sure if you went down here, you could probably find a transition line where this all started happening. And so focus on those transition lines as well. They're probably going to be somewhere right in, like right there. See where the rock starts, the grass ends, the rock starts immediately. Right in this area is probably a good hot spot as well. All right, so I'm going to keep moving on up here. As we get back into this pocket, a couple things I saw back in here uh, were some rock right around this area. You've also got a ramp back here. And then again, I got that other thing kind of like we were talking about earlier. Just I just put check on there because I can't tell what it is. There's something going on here. I don't know if it's a brush pile, rock pile but something right there underneath that check. And then as we move forward further up here, a couple little rock outcroppings that happen. You know, you got a lot of mud here, not a lot going on, but then there is a little bit of a rock pile right here, like a little rock ledge. So it would be a good area to look there. You've also got some rock here that comes out and makes a little point, a little bit of rock right in there as well. And then you've got some over here too. So again, it's weird. It's like you either have a ton of rock or just a little bit of rock, but you can't you can't seem to get you know in between. That this this lake has it all. It has a lot of different things to uh, to fish. So it looks like it'd be a really fun lake to to learn. So then moving down here, you've also got a a nice little man made point. It looks like it comes out and it's got some rock around the edges of it. This is pretty interesting. I don't know if they built that just for that dock or what's going on, but I would fish all around this area. This all looks pretty good right in here got kind of the same thing that they built out there you, you see them built out here as well with the rock and then a lot of rock down at the bottom and you got a little bit of a scatter rock pile going on right in here as well that you could take a look at and I didn't even see it but there's a ramp right there as well which doesn't surprise me because they've got everything else <laughs> all right so then moving on over here got some additional big chunk rock so obviously this is all rock as well but these rocks are really big ones so I went ahead and marked those for you and then as we move up a little bit further up in here, we've also got some additional rock, which you'll see there. And back in here, down by this dock, there's some hidden rock back in here that you wouldn't even notice if you were, you know, if you were out there fishing normally, you wouldn't know that there was rock back in there if the lake was at regular pool. So take you back to 2014 when the lake was down, and we're gonna keep moving on. Next thing we see is a ramp right here. So when I mark that for you, we also got another ramp. I think this is when we start getting ramp crazy again. Ramps, more ramps. Zoom me in here. 
this one's been there for a while. And if you look at this one, it actually looks like it might have some rock or something like that past that. So take a look right in there if you're down there fishing. Got some rock here as well. This one looks interesting because they built this. They basically like built this up and then built the uh, the dock on top of this rock. And then apparently that's not a good idea to do because if you look at it now, that's pretty much what it looks like. But there's rock right along that dock. So that, to me, is a hot spot for a dock for sure. All right, then moving on up. Didn't see too much going on in here. You get around here in the marina, you start seeing some riprap and stuff like that. You could fish around. You got a ramp back in here. And then some more rock that's kind of hidden back in here. So if you can get around this little corner here, you got some pretty good rock right in here that's making a decent little, little point there. And then we are finally at the end for this video. Can I show you a couple more things? We're actually touching into the next video. So you've got a ramp here by this mansion place or whatever this thing is. And then you've also got some rock piles that are out here as well, kind of away from everything else. See those big chunky rocks. So that pretty much wraps us up for zone one for Eagle Mountain Lake. Hopefully you guys got a lot of good information. Make sure you go out to simplisticfish.square.site, get your SD card, get your digital file, whatever it is that you need, and get these on your grass because it will definitely make fishing a lot simpler for you. You'll be able to break down lakes 10 times faster and be able to put a plan together before you even go out on the lake that's going to help you make be uh, even more successful when you're out there fishing. So until next time, guys, I hope you catch your PB. I'll be back soon with Zone 2. Take it easy.